I'm here with my guest today, Sandy Osterbotham, who is my co-creator on this project right here. You may have heard of it. Last time I didn't hold the poster up so you can see it, so Mobtown Moon. I've made the date very large <laughs> so that you can see that this show is just a mere six days away. And look how calm, what? Look how calm we look. <laughs> I had it down for October 4th. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, Sandy, I would like you to start, um, just tell me a little bit about, I know that you started as a journalist. I'm about to let um, people who don't know you get to know you. So Sandy Osterbotham is an accomplished writer, jazz pianist, songwriter. What else would you call yourself or describe yourself to people? Um, Shanties. Over ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, restless, uh, uh, searching, searching, um, uh, just impatient. That's a, all sorts of I things. I think those are good. All those all lend herself. Like when you listen to Sandy's music in a few minutes, she's going to play a couple of original tunes today too. She um, is very verbose, which is great. I, I like that. verbose. <laughs> you I think that's, verbose. But that's the negative way of putting it. I'm sure there's a probably better positive word. She's but a thank pro you. prolific um, <laughs> purveyor of words. Prolific purveyor of words. And you'll notice this in her songwriting style too. They're very full of um, literary references, um, great metaphors and imagery. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Um, what made you decide, like, what was, um, when did you decide that you wanted to sort of leave, you not, you didn't ever leave freelance writing, but then when you, when you wanted to dive more into music, like, what, what, tell me a little bit about that story. It's a really long, complicated story. We only have one minute. I've written a book about it that I hope to publish <laughs> I one know, day. that's right. But, um, the gist of it is that many things were not going right. One of the things not going right was that I was working on a novel and I had been uh, banging my head against this thing since graduate school because I did go to a creative writing um, program for graduate school. And uh, I got a piano, the first piano that I actually owned um, outside of my parents' house, and I started playing again. I started taking classical lessons from a teacher in, in Ellicott City. And um, I don't know, the thing just snowballed. Essentially, I procrastinated my way into a new career. That's what it comes down to. Okay, that's, that's so you started working in music because you were trying to avoid being a exactly. novelist. Exactly, that's exactly <laughs> that. it. That's okay. what I'm saying. Impatient, you know, all the negative things. That's basically. But then you put on an album, memoir. Yeah, yeah. And now this is, and then you were also raising your son Miles, mm -hmm. which is a, a full-time job. Um, so she was taking time to do all of these different projects, and then in 2009. Yeah. Let's talk just briefly about how we started Mobtown, I mean, just in case anybody doesn't know. Well, I started to, well, the legendary story now is I was on a treadmill running, um, training for a triathlon, and among the few choice albums from childhood that I was pulling up again to try to listen to, long stretches, you know, 45 minutes at a time, was Dark Side of the Moon. And... I hadn't really checked it out deeply in a long time, and I think this was, might have been the first time that I really sort of thought of it from a musician's standpoint instead of just a fan. Yeah. And it started, it really just filtered into my consciousness, into my imagination. And then because I have this background in, in jazz, it's funny, like jazz musicians call me a pop musician and rock musicians call me a jazz musician, but whatever, I'm somewhere in between. But I do have enough training that making arrangements of, of other people's songs is sort of part of the nature of the beast. And so I started thinking about it from that musical point of view, but also from the philosophical point of view that well, you talked a little bit about the war and this and that. We were at war, as we seem always to be. We were in the middle of financial crisis. Uh, it just seemed like a dark time. And the lyrics were and speaking the to me again. were speaking to yeah. me again about that. About and there's something I find about knowing that a 40 year old album is still speaking to us and about some of the same things. On the one hand, it's depressing. It's like, oh, do things ever change? <laughs> yeah, and on the other is... hand, it's sort of like a relief because every age, every time has its stuff going and on. And I found it to really be a solace to like think that Roger yeah. Waters had written this stuff as a young man, as an observer, as songwriters do, as we are reporters basically. Um, filters and report. I guess we're not reporting because we're not doing We're filtering it through. But anyway, yeah. um, observing. Responders. Responding, yeah. yeah. And I felt like to respond that way so poignantly as a young man and have that still be relevant 40 years later and speaking to other young people who are struggling with the exact same ideas. Yeah. It's just, like, I think that's one of the reasons why I remember right. thinking, yeah, this would be a good project to get back into it and really dig into the music, dig into the lyrics. But, you know, and I'll always thank you because, 
you know, I'd kind of mentioned it maybe to a few people, but not really. And I was, it was still such a dream project in my head. And I didn't, I had some ideas about steps toward a practical reality, but it really wasn't until you jumped on and said, let's do it, you yeah. know, and it just, you know, something this big can't be done by one person. No, and that's like one of the things that we've always talked about is that the collaborative process is really interesting and fun to learn about because you have to do, I think you have to do, you have to have an ego, but you also have to be able to shrink your yeah, ego yeah. and respond to ideas yeah. and have ideas and contribute, right. but then also be able to say, well, mine can be shaped and molded differently right. than by somebody else's influence, which has just been really right. fun for me for the last four years to be like, okay, let's try these few different things and let's let them be shaped by several people rather than just yeah. my vision. Yeah. And that includes all the musicians that we got involved yeah. and Scott Smith uh, as our engineer and, you know, everybody, you know, everybody really, there was some presence uh, from everybody. Nobody just treated it as uh, work for hire, come in and just do something. You know, nobody, nobody treated it in a slapdash manner. They all sort of got on board. And everybody's really busy and really involved in their own thing. So uh, it, it meant so much more. Um, and I, I have to say too that we were starting to talk about this the other day. I was a little surprised sometimes at how strong the response was. I I knew, but I didn't know how many people really loved this album and loved the whole idea. Um, and also to come onto a project that I feel like is well managed. Not to compliment ourselves too much, but I think that oh, we people, are awesome. people come on and when they see that it's approached with some, some deliberation and some right. serious thought, that's really been helpful. Yeah. So I don't want to talk too much longer yep. because I want you to play music. But So after this project is over and we start to think about September 29th, the day after, you and I are both going to take a couple of weeks to not think about Mobtown Moon anymore. but. When you look into the future, do you think that it's going to be next year, the stuff that you'll be working on will be more writing or more music stuff? That's interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm anxious to do a little of both. I'm really yeah. anxious to do a little of both. Um, and the other day, I landed on a particularly scary ambition that combines both of those things Good. in a certain way that I cannot discuss yet. <laughs> a little book with um, a CD <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's been interesting because because of the different nature of our lives, like, you, you know, not that this hasn't taken up a huge amount of your time, obviously, right. but you have managed to also, like, get out another record and do some other things. This has been my whole I had to do things creative, that made money. <laughs> yes, this has been my whole creative life for... Um, three years. Yeah. For three years, yeah. And now I'm a bookkeeper for a brewery. So that's that's kind of cool, too. Yeah. Like, I actually got skills from the project that I wasn't expecting. But there is this part of me that, as much as I love it, and as I know we're going to have an incredible time on Saturday night, I'm really just wondering, like, when it's behind us, and this big push is behind us, what will, you know... All sorts of ideas, I think, are going to flow back in, cool. and I'm excited about that time, too. So. Well, before we get to Sandy's music, because this will be the last one we're sitting, sitting and talking about it, the reason that we're here today on Listen In With Ellen Cherry is that Sandy and I are co-producers, co-creators of this wonderful project, Mob Town Moon, which you can view live and in person, 928, that's this coming Saturday, at Goucher College, Crash Hour Auditorium. The details are at www.mobtownmoon.com. I'm sure we'll flash that later, and you've heard me be talking about it for months and months. We are over half sold out, which is great to be pre-sold that many. Um, we have wonderful musicians. The Baltimore Choral Arts Society is gonna be there. We yeah. also have 24 other musicians in addition to the choir that will be performing on stage. You can get details at the website and also on the website of Mission Ticks where you can buy tickets. But we'd love to see you there. It's going to be wonderful. We have opening. We have an opening set from with original music, and then we'll perform the Mobtown Moon album from beginning to end on Saturday night. So you do not want to miss it. I know my parents are going to be there. Yay! Um, so please make contact. Find us on Facebook. And um, if you can't be there, don't worry. You can still buy the album. And take it with you wherever you go. And have it go. forever. You can for the next 40 years. At least. <laughs> okay, so we're going to reset the stage after you watch. We're going to, this video talks about Mob Town Moon. Um, we're going to reset the stage, and Sandy's going to regale us with her songs and stories. And um, I'll see you in a bit. I'm a singer songwriter here based in Baltimore, as is um, Sandy. She's a jazz musician and also a writer. And we joined forces to create Mob Town Moon, which is a reimagining of classic Pink Floyd here in Baltimore. It's Baltimore produced, it's Baltimore based, it's got Baltimore musicians, artists involved in it, and we're trying to promote the city as well as the incredible art scene we've got going on here. 
through the medium of this amazing music that Pink Floyd originally produced in 1973. And in honor of their 40th anniversary, we're releasing a re-recording of that album. You didn't say which album, though. Oh, I didn't? <laughs> it's Dark Side, Dark of, the Side of the Moon. Dark Side of the Moon. We are taking every track and um, reimagining it, re-orchestrating, uh, rethinking the vibe and the atmosphere, and um, finding reasons to pull in classical, jazz, rock, um, hip-hop, hip -hop, opera, uh, bluegrass, bluegrass uh, all yeah. sorts of musicians. Um, to try to showcase what an incredible scene we have here in Baltimore. I don't think it's as well known as it should be. So um, Ellen asked a minute ago about what else I was going to do afterwards, and I have, I think, 12 or 15 songs that I've never recorded, maybe one day. If people buy enough Mobtown Moon albums and we are able to put a little money in the bank, I might be able to record some of them. Um, this is one. Skin on skin, where do I end and you begin? Our mothers would have called this living in sin. We just call it living. Hand inside my hand, lead you all across this land. Fingertips like a burning brand, taking what you're giving. Mark me as yours, mark me as yours. Close all the windows and the doors, chain my heart to the floor. Mark me as yours, mark me as yours, mark me as yours. I'm not wandering anymore, so baby, mark me as yours. Morning comes too soon, sun replaces blessed moon. Soak our hides in the heat of noon, that should keep us spinning. A breath inhales a breath, air enough to outrun death. Restless vines grow over the path, butterflies yearn for pinning. Mark me as yours, mark me as yours. Close all the windows and the doors, chain my heart to the floor. Mark me as yours, mark me as yours, mark me as yours. I'm not wandering anymore, so baby, mark me as yours. and the doors chain my heart to the floor mark me as yours mark me as yours mark me as yours i'm not wandering anymore pacing around the crate bar the door before too late the opposite of love is not called hate something more like slippy Skin on skin, can't believe the state we're in. Don't 
say a word, all the room will spin and we'll be thrown apart. I mark me as yours, mark me as yours. Close all the windows and the doors, chain my heart to the floor, mark me as yours, mark me as yours, mark me as yours. I'm not wandering Close all the windows and the doors. Chain my heart down to the floor and mark me as yours. You know, we talked about verbose, we talked about literary. We didn't talk about the fact that like a lot of my songs are kind of dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know how that happens really cuz I'm I'm so square. I've been married for 20 years. I'm totally square. Um So I think th think of these two songs sometimes as a pair um, cuz that one speaks to me of uh you know, the crazy intense happiness at the beginning of a romance and um, sadly this next one is kind of the opposite. All those open mouths at the petting zoo All that naked yearning reminds me of you. Days of desert dry, no sign of morning dew. Years of empty men, gestures of motions gone through. Hungry little creatures bite the hand that feeds And drips and drabs of nurture fall like precious bees Innocent and woolly still knows how to bleed When did mere survival start to look like greed? Just a dropper filled with what we dream Memory of abundance, honey, golden cream Something to sustain us or we'll lose our steam What is now a trickle was once a rushing stream
Thanks, everybody. I hope there are, are there vast millions out there? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> um, what should I do? One, two, whatever, do two more. Um, Aw, oh, thank you. Thanks, Homer. Homer used to work at Creative Alliance. Oh, yeah. I yeah, you know him. Um, and I love that your German cheering section and German family, that is so awesome that they check in every single time. I know, because I mean, any time I have the op opportunity, I check in with Ellen Cherry TV on Sunday to see who's playing. And, and there they are, yeah. your German host family. It's awesome. The wonders of the internet. Um, so, what do you want me to play? Oh, you like, I know which one's your favorite. Yeah, play my favorite. Do it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Don't want to talk about it, even hear it all debated on the television show. Can't abide discussion, tolerate dissension, vandalize progression, no come up with alternate scenarios. I want to live my life like an innocent, unburdened of the need to know. Done with contemplation, sick of rumination, tired of trying to figure out what makes this topsy-turvy world go. Gertrude Stein is in the city of Nets tonight. She and Alice B. have prepared a beautiful spread. Bring yourselves, we'll leave your damaged goods behind. That childish nonsense is bound to cloud your head. Had to tragedies compounded, totally astounded by the terror and the bloody vengeance cue. Can't afford ambition, filled with inanition, passively conditioned to believe there's nothing else that I can do. I want to sleep as deep as an innocent, swaddled in pink or blue. Won't accept provision of my indecision. This is how it was and how it will be, so I leave it all for you. Gertrude Stein is in the city of Nets tonight. She and Alice B have prepared a beautiful spread. Bring yourselves, but leave your damaged boots behind. That childish nonsense is cloud to your head. You asked me for a hard song. Talk about it, even hear it all debated on the television show. Can't abide discussion, tolerate dissension, analyze progression, or come up with alternate scenarios. I want to live my life like an innocent, unburdened of the need to know. Done with contemplation, sick of rumination, tired of trying to figure out what makes this topsy turvy world go. Tired of being how to tragedies compounded, totally astounded by the terror and the bloody vengeance cue. Can't afford ambition, filled with inanition, passively conditioned to believe. There's nothing else that I can do. I want to sleep as deep as an innocent, swaddled in pink or blue. Won't accept provision of my indecision. This is how it was and how it will be, so I'll leave it all for you to fix. Gertrude Stein is in the city of Nets tonight. She and Alice B. have prepared a beautiful spread. Bring yourselves, we'll leave your damaged goods behind. That childish nonsense is bound to cloud your head. Gertrude Stein is in the city of Nets tonight. She and Alice B. have prepared a beautiful spread. Bring yourselves, we'll leave your damaged goods behind. That childish nonsense is bound to cloud your head.
So before Sandy and I are going to finish out the show today by playing a track, a stripped down track from the Mobtown Moon CD to excite you and make you want to go to the website immediately and purchase it and also to show up on 928, as we've been talking about. What's that day? 928, 928, September 28th, a mere six days from today. I'm pretty sure we have everything <laughs> done that we can. <laughs> um, we hope to see you there. Also, to let you know, next month's guest will be Ben Frock. October 20th on Listen In with Ellen Cherry at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be Ben Frock. He's our trumpeter on Mobtown Moon, so you can see him this weekend. And then you can also see him right here on the internet in about a month. Incredible composer. Yes, yeah. he's a composer, songwriter, super sweet glasses. He's got awesome glasses right now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to play a little track for you, and um, this is going to play us out. So um, thanks for listening. And we'll see you again, hopefully, this weekend. And if not, then next month. And thank you to my very special guest, Sandy Osterbotham. I posted her website. You can see her, sandyosterbotham.com. And I'll post it again before I log the chat up. It's perfectly phonetic. It is. Yes. It is phonetic. It's perfectly phonetic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> Don't be afraid to care Leave but don't leave me Look around, choose your own ground Long you live and high you fly Smiles you'll give and tears you'll cry All you touch and all you see Is all your life will ever be Run, Robert, run Dig that hole, forget the When at last the work is done Don't sit down, it's time to dig another one Long you live and high you fly Only if you ride the tide Balanced on the biggest way you race towards an early grave Smiles you give and tears you cry. 
ocean all you see is all your life will ever be just breathe just breathe And that's actually the song that this whole project kind of started on. And it was sort of in that form. So you got to hear it first here or last year or whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we have to get rehearsal started for this big show. So we're going to get to work. Right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much again to Sandy Osservatham. And I'll Thank post you. the website in just a second. You're watching Listen In with Ellen Cherry. And we're going to see you in a month if we don't see you this weekend. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye. Bye.